This is crepe myrtle, Lagostromia, and this is a low branching or multi-trunk uh, take on the tree. And what we're going to look at is how to prune it. As you can see here, the blooms occur on the outer edges of the plant, and uh, that's because all the blooms occur on new growth. So the pruning is going to be oriented towards creating new growth for uh, maximum blooming on the plant. This is fall color right before the plant goes dormant, and now you're looking at the winter time um, look of crepe myrtle. So as you can see, there's seed heads at the top of these branches, and uh, those are the spent flowers that have become seeds. And what we're going to look at is where and how to uh, prune this. Here you're looking at some uh, cuts from two to three years ago, right here at this joint. And what happens is when you make a cut, typically the plant throws up two to three divisions or new um, new limbs from the point of the uh, cut. And that's just something to know strategically in advance what you're going to create when you make your cuts is you're going to probably get two to three more new branches come out right below wherever you make your cut. So you want to anticipate that when you're deciding where to uh, cut or prune your tree. Um, so if we look at this older tree, this is showing you um, a good example of the year where before where you can see these very clear nodes of where things were cut and then that they grew three to five feet after the cut was made. So again, here's the cut and then up above that you're going to get another three to five year, uh, feet worth of uh, growth depending on the age of the plant but once they've been established for four to five years you can expect that amount of growth typically uh, each year if you're pruning them back if you don't prune them back it's just going to depend on conditions and how healthy the tree is you may only get a, a you know six to twelve inches if you just keep letting the tree grow and grow one of the things that I shoot for on mine this one you're looking at here is it's about uh, 13 to 15 feet tall and uh, here I'm starting to prune I'm I've decided where I want to cut back to and so I'm gonna start cutting from the outside and work my way into the center as you'll see here so I'm I'm about four to five feet lower than the top of the canopy and um, I'll start working my way around the perimeter to create kind of an oval top to the tree and you'll see how that works out as we move along um, by removing the outside branches it gives you a clear line into the middle and um, otherwise you're fighting um, whatever's on the outside as you're trying to get at them and these branches falling and slapping you in the face is no fun so I found that that's a pretty good strategy but the first thing you want to do is decide where you want to start cutting stand back and get a, a good sense of where that makes sense and then work your way in here you're looking at the first layer of cuts and um, just trying to show you how that appears where I've cut right above uh, the old cut, yep, right there, and um, in some cases very close to uh, last year's cut because this tree has really reached a height that I'm happy with. So I'm going to start coming back to a similar place. The thing that I don't like with how some people prune the crepe myrtles is they get back to a very thick fat branch and they make these big cuts and they've got a two to three inch diameter branch sometimes. These ones here are only about a quarter to a half an inch thick and you'll you'll see what you saw at the beginning of the video is how you have a very nice even full form in the tree and that's how this will fill back in here I'm starting to whittle away at the edges so you can see how that's starting to take shape with the outside edge has been removed over here to the right and then the center is still there so working my way in and that's really the approach to this. Now the tricky part is depending on your access and how tall you decide to uh, let your tree get to is uh, when you start getting up at this higher elevation getting to the middle can be tricky. I'm on a ladder here using a pole pruner 
and uh, it gets a little dicey but usually you'd have access from all the way around the tree and that makes it a lot easier I've only got access from half of this because I'm backed up to the house um, so still working my way in and um, then the next thing I'm going to do is once I've got the entire canopy rounded off then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start removing some of the outer uh, twiggy bits I'll just call it where you have smaller uh, branches they're only like an eighth of an inch thick and they get brittle and they're easy to remove but I go to a smaller pruning pole and I start taking off all that kind of garbage and uh, that way I'm stripping it down more to the the larger branches that are kind of a quarter inch diameter or larger and um, that way again it's easy to get my way into the middle if there's anything left in there and a lot of those smaller branches die anyway so if you leave them on there they just become clutter so I like to get those out as you can see here and also I like to use that pole pruner as uh, tongs of sorts so here you can start to see how the outer edge looks there's uh, a lot of twigginess removed there's still a little in there and what I'm doing here now is I'm starting to take off crossovers and what that means is if you've got a major branch and it's laying up against another one what I do is I look and see do I really need that branch to maintain the full form of the tree and if I don't I take it off I don't want a very cluttered up tree and each year there's one or two that I'll remove um, that just aren't necessary so what I'm trying to do is predict where these fill in and if there's two or three filling in the same place I remove one or two of those to make it more evenly spaced and here we're getting down to the end the trees taken shape I've pulled it back to about a 10 11 foot high tree and um, I'm just about done so now I'm just removing some of the twigs to clean it up and now we're done and that's how I prune a crepe myrtle um, try and do that whenever the tree is dormant before it gets too close to um, to spring and uh, you're all set for the following year and you'll get a nice evenly spaced full uh, bloom this coming season.